Debuting with 13 members from an agency that had declared bankruptcy, they literally started from rock bottom and had every reason to fail. Yet, their persistence, fueled by unbreakable teamwork, carved their reputation from the ground up into a towering force in the K-pop industry today. These 13 boys created a miracle, and this is their extraordinary story. The group that almost never happened. Their journey began in 2012 when Pledis Entertainment introduced their trainees through the series 17 TV, broadcasted in Ustream and YouTube over five seasons spanning two years. The company's president, Hong Sung Soo, explained the choice behind this approach. Back then, it was tough to get the word out about new artists from medium size or small agencies. The green practice room became an iconic backdrop as viewers watched these aspiring idols develop their skills. It was never an easy road. In 2013, a big announcement put Seventeen's fate in limbo. Plytus Entertainment faced severe financial difficulties and had to declare bankruptcy. During that time, some trainees even left. Faced with uncertainty, the members who chose to stay boldly took matters into their own hands and began learning to create their music. This period will mark the genesis of their identity as self-producing idols. Uji, now recognized as their main producer, began experimenting with music composition using a borrowed MacBook from fellow member Wanu. The members often stay late, making songs on the roof of their home and creating choreography to accompany it. Hoshi, the performance team leader, took it upon himself to ensure their dance was flawless. He even used tough love, telling them, because of people like you, our team will fail. On Radio Star, he admitted it was because he was young and all they had was this one team. All that sweat and tears eventually forged Seventeen's identity as the performance powerhouse with unmatched synchronization. In the end, the company's vice president ultimately sold his personal house to secure Seventeen's debut. Fueled by a promise to support each other like a family, the company CEO gifted the members their iconic Seventeen rings. The ring became an integral part of their identity as one. All the members wear this on their pinky finger and never remove it, even during their downtime. On May 2015, Seventeen finally greets the world with Adore You, self-producing idols who defies all expectation. There were so many members when we first debuted, so some people had a pessimistic outlook saying, can they really make it? Said Sun Quan while recalling their early days. Realistically, with 13 members, it's indeed tough to give everyone a chance to shine in a four minute song. If we count that mathematically, each member would only get less than 18 seconds, and this is not even considering the chorus. However, 17 embrace their significant number as an asset to create bigger impacts. They tell stories through their songs and convey their message through performances. They divided into three units, hip-hop, vocal, and performance, letting each member shine in their specialized area. Uji led the vocal group and took charge in song production. Hoshi spearheaded the performance unit and contributed significantly to choreography, while s Coops led the hip-hop unit and managed the overall group. Remarkably, all 13 members are skilled dancers, regardless of their specialization in units. Hoshi said, everyone's good at learning dance moves and chimes in with new ideas, asking questions like, what if I raise my arms more. From day one, Seventeen set themselves apart. Right from their debut album, all the members have direct input on the album's concepts, directions, lyrics, composition, production, and choreography. While their agency initially approached famous producers for their debut song, Uji had a revelation. He stated, I sang a song written by someone else, then sang Adore You, and that's when I felt it fit like a glove. I became convinced that we should debut with the song we wrote. This is indeed a brave move. Although Adore You didn't secure any music wins in Korea, their debut album made its way to the Billboard charts at number 9 only a week into their debut, and later sits at the glorious top spot. Not only that, their songs Monse and Adore You also earned its spot at Billboard's World's Digital Songs chart. An impressive feat given K-pop's global influence at the time was not as huge as it is today. With unwavering determination and consistent high-quality self-produced music, they finally tasted success nearly a year into their careers when Pretty You earned them their first ever music show win. The members continued to grow their role in the team. Following their unit leaders, all members earned songwriting credits just two years into their career, with the performance team members including Jun, The Eight, and Dino joining Hoshi to convey 
convey their musical messages. Their dedication rewarded them with their first day song at the 2019 Asia Artist Awards after four years in the industry. A day song or grand award is regarded as the highest award presented only to artists whose contribution to music has an undeniable impact. As Seventeen gradually cemented their reputation, they continued to challenge themselves with new concepts and music genres in each comeback. Their efforts paid off as their 2020 release, Hengare, marks a new height in Seventeen's career. It became their highest first week sales and marks Seventeen's entry to the esteemed list of million seller artists. With this album, they also mark a new record in Japan as the only foreign boy group to top number one Oricon chart for two consecutive weeks, becoming the first foreign male artist to do so in 12 years since the legendary Backstreet Boys. Not only known as great performers, the members are also equally talented entertainers. Their self-produced show, Going 17, garnered immense love from the public, even sparking its own dedicated fan base known as Cubic. Within just the first two seasons, the show accumulated an impressive total of over 200 million views. Can't stop, won't stop. Nowadays, it's nearly impossible to discuss K-pop without mentioning Seventeen. They just continue to smash records after records. Their latest album, Seventeenth Heaven, achieved an extraordinary milestone by breaking their own record that is previously held by FML. On October 12th, Seventeenth Heaven recorded a total of 4.67 million stock pre-orders, beating their own previous album, FML, with 4.64 million stock pre-orders. It's worth noting that FML became the world's only album to sell 3 million copies on its first day. It became the best-selling album in K-pop history, selling over 6 million copies in just two months. Not stopping there, they recently shattered their own record by exceeding 10 million album sales in just nine months in Korea alone. This achievement is monumental in the era of digital releases, where physical album now symbolizes fans' loyalty. To provide context, it took 17 six years and six months since their 2015 debut to November 2021 to reach the same number of sales. Recognizing their significant impact on South Korean culture, Seventeen was honored with the prestigious Culture Ambassador Award, highlighting their role in fostering cultural connections between the United States, Korea, and various Asian countries. Their success not only shaped their path, but also lifted their company to new heights. Joshua revealed in The Goblin Who Steals My Wisdom that Pledis Entertainment CEO credited Seventeen's success for saving the company. As the leader sang in their Leaders Unit song, we built a building from our basement unit. But what really sets them apart is their deep bond with one another. It can be seen clearly in the fact that all 13 members chose to renew their contracts with Pledis Entertainment for another seven years. As Sun Quan recalled the process, they decided to go as a group rather than meeting the company individually and score individual agreement. Let's do this together. This achievement makes Seventeen the first 10-plus member group to break the so-called seven-year curse in K-pop, where many groups ended up disbanding due to the inability to reach a conclusion and contract renewal. Remarkably, they did this without changing the lineup or losing any members. What's even more impressive is that they did it a whole year before their original contracts were due to end. While Seventeen continues to hit new career milestones, the group is clear in their intention to keep progressing. As grateful as we are for all the love that we receive from our fans, we're still hungry. Vernon says, We hope to go up and up even more. We strive for more. Seventeen is really the epitome of slow and steady wins the race. Their resilience, talent, and beautiful lifelong friendship continues to shine on and off stage. 13 members, 3 units, 1 team. If you enjoyed our video, check out our special release for the spooky month of Halloween. We'll be sharing the seven scariest moments of K-pop idols' paranormal encounters that will send shivers down your spine. Watch it now and don't look behind.